Hey, welcome to the 8th episode of Grubby's Warcraft 3 Commentaries. If you haven't watched any of the previous 7 episodes yet, as your war chief, I command you to watch them at youtube.com slash steelseries. And subscribe to their channel to obtain level 3 Farsight Vision into when the next episodes are online. <laughs> uh, that's funny. So, now that we've dispensed with the jokes for the night, I'd like to take a turn for the serious. A long, long time ago, Demon Lord Kil'jaeden appeared before Ner'zhul, an orcish shaman. Tempted with promises of power, Ner'zhul pledged an unholy oath to Kil'jaeden and in doing so doomed his race for a violent and blood-filled future. The orcs transformed from a peaceful, honorable farming people into the bloodlusted orcish horde corrupted by the demon taint. Betrayed by those whom they trusted, the brownish orcs turned green and their eyes a blazing red. Necromancy and other dark magics were rife. Eventually the race corpses of the dead got new masters and organized themselves under the banner of the Scourge. I have always considered it a sacred duty to send these undead back to the hellish depth wherein they belong. The next game is a demonstration of a battle with a particularly nefarious adversary. I encountered Ted for the NGL1 solo league in 2009 and my oh my did he pull an uncommon but potent strategy here on Secret Valley. Now sit tight with me young ones and watch as the drama unfolds. So, on this map, Secret Valley, it is usually thought that Auric has an advantage, and I wouldn't necessarily disagree, but there is one or two unique elements for Undead which can be exploited in order to gain an advantage over the Orc player. We have to look a little bit at the layout of the map to see what I'm talking about. There are two heal fountains in the top left and the bottom right, which usually provide the greatest boon to orc players since they can heal all of their stuff for free and healing usually is the orcs biggest problems in any game that they're going up against other enemies uh, it's a pretty small map which usually is good for rush distances like uh, with humans against orc uh, the tower rush ends up into orc space pretty quickly there's a tavern on the way where you can pick up stuff like heroes in order to bolster your rush and uh, make it even quicker than waiting for a second hero from the altar of that race. And then there's the pretty interesting creep camps in the middle, which are relatively risky for Orc to creep when other races are uh, scouting them out and possibly creepjacking them. And also the two Ogre Magi, they drop really powerful items and uh, they can be useful as well in uh, rushing the Orc. So. Basically, to summarize, if you attack the orc within the first, I don't know, six, seven minutes, there could be a pretty good chance that the orc has not had a chance to creep out the heal fountain yet, and thus will not be able to make use of the heal fountain as much in the progress of the game. One strategy which uh, I had encountered once before in a team league, I believe, from Ted, in NGL, uh, NGL as well, was the Lich Tower Rush on Secret Valley. Now this was a particularly uh, cool strategy. I don't know if Ted developed it himself or if he got it from someone else, but he's We're definitely the first to do a Lich first Crypt Fiend Tower Rush against Orc with great effectiveness. There's a lot of Orcs who lost to it and I didn't know how I was going to measure up to it if I ever met it. And, uh, there was one game we played recently uh, before this game, which uh, was really, really close. I ended up taking an expansion, uh, and uh, the uniqueness of the situation kind of surprised him, and he actually didn't scout my expansion, and I ended up making some kind of uh, miraculous uh, comeback after he destroyed my main base. Now, in this game, that is not the case. I'm pretty low life. Uh, I haven't crept out the health fountain and I'm not uh, going quickly for his base which happened in that game 
In this game, I'm gonna have to try and uh, hold it. So uh, what I did was I first grabbed a big item with my Blade Master, and I knew by this time that he's coming to Lich Tower rush me. So I, uh, on the spur, I thought of uh, bringing my peons to do a speed scroll around on one of his crypt fiends, or perhaps on his Lich. And I felt maybe this could help me in order to. Uh, buy time to get up this offensive burrow and also uh, maybe to take off some of the edge of this attack. I did a surround on this Fian but he did do frost armor so he's got uh, three extra armor and is making all my stuff slow. Immediately forced to use potion of greater invulnerability and of course when you do heal solve yourself you get uh, a little bit of extra hit points which are definitely very useful. don't think I lost any grunts yet which is good and I uh, killed an Acolyte and a Kripfian, so not too bad results. Lost some uh, mining time of lumber, but I really don't need that at this point. And I bought time for uh, getting my third burrow up, so definitely quite useful in uh, repelling the evil Scourge. I'm trying to heal up my Blade Master, almost level 2, which will help quite a lot for Critical Strike. Of course, you don't want to get that heal solve cancelled, uh, even though I still have quite a lot. You'll see they're gonna be uh, very valuable and money is definitely gonna be the name of this game. If I have plenty of money I'll just make war mill, towers and so on, but I don't so have to be uh, careful with that. Taking down those ziggurats while they still don't have any armor. The buildings uh, under construction do not have armor and are easier to kill. This will buy me some extra time as well. Took down two but took a lot of uh, damage and now I have to run away. That grunt accidentally attacked frost armor. I got slowed down and picked off. I'm trying to replenish uh, heal salt and clarity. This burrow, I guess I never really thought that I'll get it up, but uh, it provides some kind of how do you how do you call that? You know, the the lightning rod, which uh, is on top of a building and uh, takes the lightning away from like more vital parts, uh, which could sustain a lot of damage if the lightning strikes there. A, in Dutch, we call it like a lightning distractor. That's what this was. Uh, it provides a target for him to attack while it doesn't cost that much to cancel and I get some free hits with the burrow. That was a successful cancel by me. And uh, in the meantime I'm getting some hits on that trip here. Now trying to take down this ziggurat. I feel like it's too close. I want to take it down but I do not get the chance to do so. And uh, actually sustain a lot of damage. So that was not a very productive attack. High pressure is on and uh, gotta be careful. That was my last wind walk. Just got enough energy. Still wondering if maybe I'll get it. Nope. Lost the ground. Did kill a ghoul and I uh, have to go back now. Gotta heal up. Can't come too back. Uh, can't come back too fast with my blade master here. Luckily I've got two full HP grunts. This one has to go to the heal fountain. And this burrow once again acting as a lightning distractor. And uh, you see how it gives me some uh, extra hits. This burrow together I managed to kill Fee and speed scroll very uh, important here. Always try to use it to move in and out of battle safely. And to use my windwalk there as I do not have cooldown yet available on scroll speed. They replenish quite quickly in a shop, but uh, you can't use them too quickly in uh, rapid succession. So It's uh, good that he doesn't have dust. I now attack him. Very risky, one could say. Well, uh, speed score right after. I knew that I have enough uh, protection and armor and hit points to make it away safely. But I was hoping I was able to kill that Fiend first, but uh, not quite able to. Uh, <laughs> I did not have uh, Balls of Steel there. <laughs> and I uh, could have uh, perhaps lost my Blade Master, and uh, that could be the end of me in this game. See how useful it was that I uh, purchased two Circlets of Nobility in the start? They're just providing my Blade Master with all sorts of versatility and extra life, damage, armor, attack speed, mana. Quickly wind walk so he cannot use his uh, crit fiend to cancel my heal solve. At this point, I uh, just finished my war mill. Uh, the reason I didn't make it too fast is because I first needed more grants and burrow and items. And uh, very fast war mill. There's really no point in making like watchtower here or here. Uh, it outranges a tower, but I would have to make it so close that he would be able to outrange me and outgun me with those crit fiends. And it would just force me to defend a position which I cannot defend uh, with Grants. And he'll be able to get a lot of free shots with me. 
uh, including with those spirit tower and uh, the Rubian tower. So uh, that's that's why I didn't make War Mill faster. If you're wondering why I didn't go tier two, it's because uh, I just don't have the money for it. I would probably die before that. I've actually used this strategy that Ted is doing uh, many times against both race switcher orcs and people who have orc as their main race and have uh, done quite well with it. Uh, you can ask the Muslim about it. We used to do a lot of uh, random random uh, and uh, did quite a lot of uh, games with that. But um, yeah, I'm, uh, I've got one tower up here which is uh, also doing quite good. Managed to kill another fiend here. At this point my blade master is still level 2. Uh, level 3 will help a lot once I get another wind wall. This tower is more of a defensive one. The uh, reason I didn't make it to the front is because I do not wish to defend a position like that. And now he's pretty smart. He made a tomb of relics and a crypt in the attack so that he can buy dust of appearance and rod of necromancy to bolster his attack. I'm really under the gun here as he just cancelled that clarity solve and heal solve. I do not have enough energy, uh, I mean <laughs> mana on my blade master to wind walk again. I do have a speed scroll which is uh, my get out of jail for free card. At this point this burrow is becoming way more instrumental than I could have uh, perhaps predicted at the start of the game. You see how a decision like that, like I made this burrow as he was coming to me for the first time and because I moved out with the speed scroll peons, I was able to get it up. If I hadn't get that up, I wonder how I would have been able to uh, fare against this. And uh, you see how I just had to come in last second as he uh, almost took it down. And now with the speed scroll, I'm able to take down his lich. One advantages in this kind of rush. There is no death coil. He cannot save any of his stuff if I do get the critical amount of damage on his hero or fiends to take them down. But still, he's got that blight. Uh, four times faster regeneration for uh, undead units here. And again, he's uh, tar targeting that burrow. I'm trying to save it in the nick of time. And uh, timing is just such a delicate thing here in Warcraft 3 where I'm almost gonna lose it. And then I choose to come in with my Blade Master. I wait until the last possible second. And while he's still attacking my burrow for a bit, my Blade Master is not taking as much hits. And my burrow barely survives. And it's that kind of. Uh, I don't know, like you just get a feel for that really after playing a lot of Warcraft 3 games. You get the feel like one more hit will kill me or will not kill me. And one more hit will kill the burrow or not. So, yeah. I'm running a little bit low on lumber. Only six, four. Four lumber left. Three lumber left. Only one peel mining. Just brought back another load. And with another speed scroll, I'm able to take down a couple of more fiends. Now I have to run as I'm running low life, but I know that I can take more risks now with the Lich not being around. And even if he bought it again from the tavern, he wouldn't have the mana yet to uh, buy, uh, I, mean, I mean to do like a Frost Nova on me or something like that. Uh, these grunts are uh, getting a little bit ahead of themselves, gonna probably lose that. Uh, his Lich is back already. Level 2 We're Lich coming attack. back in, taking down a couple of grunts there and it's finally now that I chose to go to tier 2 in order to uh, get Demolisher. And I'm starting to feel a little bit more comfortable, you know, a little bit more safe because as soon as I'm tier 2 I'm gonna be able to get Demolishers uh, which will help a lot in trying to take down those towers but it's not over yet. It would be silly and, and fatal to consider a game won before the opponent uh, taps out with uh, GG, especially against a Chinese or a Korean player, both of whom uh, have uh, countries with very healthy esports scenes for uh, Warcraft 3. And uh, I've played a lot of tournaments in those countries, produced a lot of very strong players. In fact, most of my opponents in the last two years or so of my Warcraft 3 were all Chinese. Uh, and Korean. I have a lot of respect for uh, the top players of uh, Warcraft 3, no matter what country they're from of course, but it's just kind of easier to uh, consider everyone who's from China and Korea uh, to be incredibly armed and dangerous. And I finally lost my Voodoo Lounge, which uh, will affect my, I guess, survivability in a very bad way, so I'm gonna have to try and get up a new Voodoo Lounge as soon as possible, and not too far away either. 
I could be making it here or perhaps here, but this is a little bit far away, whereas this one is more uh, fragile uh, and more easy to attack. So again, before my burrow is quite going to die, I have to run in and attack him, even if it's just to buy my peons some time in order to do additional repairs on this burrow. And I did just that, saw I was running low on lumber, had to return a couple of peons there, um, their lumber, and now I'm making another voodoo lounge. And as you can see, this attack is far from over. He's pretty close to level 3, at which point he'll get level 2 frost nova, or perhaps frost armor, and uh, that will help a lot with this attack. And keep in mind that this is such a unique situation uh, of a game that there is no way of knowing how far along his tech at home is. Yeah, sure. I I have a decent idea that he's spending all of his money into it, but for the same, you know, for the same chance, he could have tier two already, making a death knight, possibly making obsidian statues, and that would just be uh, really bad. So, in fact, we have not looked yet at his base for a long time. I'm not going to show you in order to leave you in the dark about that. Uh, the monitor shooting at the towers, but it's too easy for him to shoot it down. So I have to go to the other side. Can't stress enough how important it is in these situations to keep a cool head. Look, I'm uh, actually supply blocked. Uh, he killed burrows, he killed my voodoo launches, but by remaining patient and meticulous and never taking undue risks, I'm able to uh, still hold out. And uh, it's already, it's already uh, obvious that one demolisher is not enough to take down his tower. He has a lot of acolytes repairing there so i'm gonna need to get another demolisher but look how little resources i have i just have enough resources for a demolisher but i don't even have the burrow yet and i'm not mining any lumber so i'm gonna have to fix that quickly my grunts are dying and he actually has a lot more cryptians than i have uh, grunts my only saving grace here is uh, my base defenses and the blade master and the fact that i still have a voodoo lounge As long as he's not doing anything incredibly damaging to my base, it is good that I get some time to uh, heal up and lick my wounds here. Soon I should have enough resources for a second demolisher. Tower doing a great job, even though his healing rate is pretty high. I'm still putting a lot of damage on his uh, crypt fiends. And uh, by now I'm getting a lot of heal pot mana pot and high, uh, high mana and HP on my blade. I'm nearly level 5. He has dust, so I don't want to be too foolish and uh, get slowed and possibly get Nova to death. But that was a nice 2 crit fiend kills. And, uh, if I was dead now, I would be thinking I want to kill that barracks and I want to try to see if I can snipe the demolisher. Because if those two are down, it's gonna be just one blade master against a whole army. And uh, despite what some people might tell you, with uh, frost effect, Blade Master is not as scary and he would not actually be able to uh, hold this uh, by himself but uh, thanks to the Demolisher and the base defense I can still hold out. He's almost level 3, uh, luckily didn't get it yet. Imagine if I lost like a couple of more peons or an extra grunt, that would be quite uh, significant here. But, uh, here I get level 5, big smile on my face. Uh, second demolisher is almost out. Gotta he use heal pot first and then wind walk run away. Don't want to do it in the other uh, order, like wind walk away and then realize you're not gonna make it and uh, drink a heal potion. And then uh, you'll be revealed and uh, in much, much danger. And now taking down that tower with pretty good speed, killing some fiends, using heal pot and got another mana pot, but that is it ladies and gentlemen evil undead expunged and sent back to the grave orcs around the whole world rejoice so i i hope you uh, enjoyed that commentary i think it's a uh, kind of an illustration of how to stay calm and really think about every move that you do in uh, the face of a tower rush i think um some uh, tips which you may have learned in this game may be applicable to orc versus human where it's also incredibly important to remain calm to keep everything alive and then slowly but surely bolster your base defenses and get those demolishers in order to do a slow push out 
I think even in StarCraft 2 there must be some applications where you're being attacked uh, for example with bunks and tanks and it's just important to hold on till you get the kind of army that can break you out and then afterwards win the game. So this, ladies and gentlemen, this was uh, episode 8 of Grubby's Warcraft 3 commentaries. If you enjoyed this one, I hope that you can leave a comment on SteelSeries YouTube channel, youtube.com slash SteelSeries, uh, or on the, this video directly. I hope you'll tune in again for episode 9 of Grubby's Warcraft 3 commentaries, and uh, all the future ones. I'm also doing StarCraft 2 commentaries, you can find them all on their channel. Uh, I'm Grubby. Uh, you can find more information about me on followgrubby.com. You can follow my live stream at twitch.tv slash followgrubby. And well, you see all the URLs there in the bottom right. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I always do. And uh, hope to see you again next time. Goodbye.